Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 33 of my regrowth Let's Play. Last time, we started gathering up some stuff for Thomcraft, specifically the Crucible, the Thaumanamanamanamanamicon, and the Iron-Capped Wooden Wand. Today, I would like to continue along the path of Thomcraft. So, the very next thing that I really want to get built is a research table. To make the research table, I need to get the table from Thomcraft, and the table requires great wood. To make great wood, I need to go back and finish that Treefid Sea quest that I started oh so long ago, but never actually completed. And the Treefid Seeds are actually relatively simple to make. I've already shown how to get all of the materials for Mutandus Extremis, Ember Moss, Water Artichoke Globes, Mandrake Root, Rook of Misfortune, and Tear of the Goddess. As a quick refresher, refresher, because it's been a week or two, Mutandus Extremis is made by placing Netherwart and Mutandus into a Witch's Cauldron, requiring no altar power. The Reek of Misfortune is created by burning an Elder Sapling in the Witch's Oven, or distilling a Diamond Vapor with a Gas Tear. You will get one as a side effect of creating your Refined Evil. Your Tear of the Goddess is created by distilling Breath of the Goddess with Lapis Lazuli. You will gain Whiff of Magic. Foul Fume, Slime Ball, and your Tear of the Goddess. And your Water Artichoke and Ember Moss. Well, your Ember Moss you're going to need to use Mutandus to get to. Water Artichokes and Mandrakes can both be bred using the Agricraft breeding. All you need to do is look up the seeds in NEI, and then you will see how they are created and what soil they need. So every craft of this gives us two tree fed seeds. I'm going to go ahead and just make eight right off the bat, because I know that I'm going to need them in the long run. This allows us to complete a quest down in How the World Changes for the Guard Tree, and will give us a Creeper Heart. So if you're lacking in a Creeper Heart, I believe this is a way to get one. And it does not open any quests here, but if I go down to the way the world feels, it does open up the What's So Great About Wood quest. The life energy you've seen in Treefids has inspired you to try and use it to resurrect some of the most awe-inspiring tree species you recall from before the Cataclysm. These great wood trees have such innate magic in them that a single sapling will grow into a huge tree with a 2x2 two -two trunk as long as space is afforded. And if we create one great wood sapling, we will get three saplings and 16 logs, so we don't even need to wait, which is awesome. So the Great Wood Sapling is an infu not an infusion, a runic altar recipe using three strong essence, two nature essence, and one of each of the witchery trees. So we're gonna grab three strong essence, two nature essence. And let's go get that one of each of the nature uh the witchery saplings. So a rowan, an elder, and a hawthorn sapling, along with our tree fed seed. Gonna get all of those dumped into the runic altar here. Bam, 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 and one of you. Make sure we have the recipe correct for once. Oh, I forgot to put in the nature essence. This is why we double check things, folks. And then we grab our wand of the... All oh, right, I forgot I had the dispenser set up there to wand it for me. Excellent. And like every runic altar recipe, this one's going to require a bit of living rock, even though maybe it doesn't make quite as much sense this time around as it normally would. Um, why are you not getting any power at all? Oh, because my spreader is pointed the wrong way. Hang on. I forgot, we have one mana spreader supplying both the runic altar... No, 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 no. Stop that. Nightshade bind there. Mana spreader, bind to you. Excellent. And now we have progress. It takes a fair bit of mana, but not a, an absolute ton. So these Nightshades and Daybloomers should be able to restore it without trouble. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. Excellent. And now, there we have it. One Greatwood Sapling. Go ahead and complete that quest. Claim our reward, and that opens up two new quests. Before we go any further, though, I think that I want to build, uh, I want to grow a great wood tree in range of my altar. And I think the easiest way to do that at the moment is actually going to be to tear down this birch wood tree. Because I can grow birch wood trees in a lot less space than a great wood tree. So, yeah, that'll work out pretty well. 
Now the great uh, the altar can only draw power from within 16 blocks of it. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And okay, good. So right out in this area is absolutely fine. We're going to go ahead and put our great wood sapling down right here on this open block, and it should be able to grow. Now, we're going to have to just leave it and wait, honestly, because we do not have a form of fast growth for this. I can try both bone meal and magical fertilizer. Neither is going to work for me. As you can see, it won't even let me use the bone meal or the magical fertilizer on them. We will be able to craft an item later on in the Thongcraft progression that will allow us to fast grow these trees. We're just not there yet. So the next thing that I really want to do, because it's going to be so important to Thongcraft and it'll give me another special tree type around my altar to increase the amount of power that is in it, is actually to make the Silverwood sapling. So, as it says, every cloud the majesty of the great wood trees are unrivaled, yet you wonder what might result if you further steep their saplings in magic. To create the silver wood sapling, we have to start with a great wood sapling. It requires another tree food seed, extreme essence, and then otherwise the exact same recipe. So we're only going to be able to make one of those for a bit, but hopefully we'll be able to grow more saplings from the one tree that we do get out of this. Unfortunately, with Silverwood, it's not exactly a guarantee. Let's get that going. And then we will work on some other things. Is that the right recipe? Yes, it is. Excellent. I really like this setup. It, it makes mass even mass producing these items a lot less painful so that is good enough for me let's get this tree fed seed put away now will the silver wood yes the silver wood quest will in fact give us four more saplings and eight logs so again we don't need to wait uh and you know what i think that i'd really like to get a silver wood tree over here and there should be enough room for it if i just clean out that stuff and move these mystical white flowers over here. Excellent. Let's go collect our sapling. Should be done by now. And it is. We can complete the Every Cloud quest, gaining four more saplings and eight silverwood logs. And we can set up a sapling right here. And make sure that it has free space all around it, because I don't know what side they grow from, and I do know that they grow a little bit large. Now, I did expand the tank but I think, yeah, it should be fine. Not a problem. That should give the silverwood enough room to grow. Might end up displacing some leaves. We'll find out if we give it enough time. If these haven't grown in a few days, I will have to come back and try again. And I think that I need to clear out around this great wood just to be certain that it's okay. Like, I don't, I, I think that it's fine. Just deleting any grass and flowers that it's near, but better safe than sorry, in my opinion. Get that bluebell put back down. And we can grow a birch... Is there enough room right here? I think there's just barely enough room right there to grow a birch tree. Let's find out. So we build a dense thicket of witchery power. Yes, there is. Excellent. That's perfect. Altar power, 9410 at the moment. Should increase once the great wood and silver wood grow. Which will take time. They will... Don't expect it, them to grow instantly. They could take over a day of in-game time before they actually expand into trees. Perhaps more. So, patience. Patience is required. Now that we have our great wood logs, we are able to create the tabled dis I mean, finish the tabled discussion quest. Now that you have access to Greatwood, you can start to learn more of the basic thaumaturgy above creation of the Thaumonomicon and Wooden Wand. As can be seen in the Thaumonomicon, you can create tables from Greatwood and then use these tables to make a research desk and an arcane crafting table. So let's make three tables and a scribing tools to proceed. I believe tables are made with planks and logs, so let's just convert 12 for the time being. Turn some of them into planks. And there are 
Oop, that will only give us two tables, won't it? Okay, no problem. Huh. I could not have done that better if I had planned it. Well, I guess I could have. I could have just a little bit more of the planks. But that's alright. This will be enough. Uh, scribing tools are made with a feather, which is over here. Some ink, which I'm actually l running low on because I recently did a bunch of work on Bibliocraft. So I'm down to, I think, like six or seven-ish. There we go. Two. I am down to two ink sacks. All right, we're going to have to go hunting some squid to fix. Actually, wait a second. Can I use other types of black dye? Because I have access to black floral powder in droves. Yes, I can. In fact, I can use black floral powder. Makes me wonder if I can put black floral powder on the printing press. Let's test that, shall we? Let's go check that out. Grab me some black petals. I'll just take ten. And my pestle and mortar. Turn that into black floral powder, or floral black powder, I suppose. Now, can you be applied to the printing press? No, it really only wants ink sacs. Okay, well, here. You have your ink sacs, and you be happy. I am going to go ahead and grab a bottle that I have set up over here in the witchery area. There's plenty of them. We're going to put these together to create our scribing tools. And then we are immediately going to take the... Well, hang on. We'll finish the quest before we go any further. Detection task. To make the arcane work table, simply right-click a table with your wand. Uh, where do I want to set up my Thalmic library? I kind of have a lot of this area taken up. I suppose I could tear down the Hobgoblin Hut, rebuild that some other time, some other place, and make a Thalmcraft corner to go in the general magical area. Huh. Makes me wonder if I should move the animals inside somewhere and industrialize those farms. Eh, we'll set up a temporary area because that's what I do when I can't decide what to do. You know what? We already have a bit of a library going on over here with the printing press and all of that. So we will expand this. Yes. Um, I think that means that the essence berries have to go. Yes, it does. And that will also give me impetus to start getting that portal moved. There's a couple more portals that I'm going to want to build over time. So making a proper place for them could be a good idea. Anyway, essence berry go away. Tables into the world. We're going to need three of them. And one of them needs to be clicked with the scribing tools, and one of them needs to be clicked with the wand. Scribing tools. We're actually going to need to make another scribing tool as well to carry around with us. Uh, no, I don't want them on that side. Can I take them out? Yes, and put them over there? No. Darn it. Okay, that's okay. We'll fix this. We can fix this. Aesthetics are important, yo. There. That's better. That's a lot better. And then, bam, you are now an arcane work table. The arcane work table is a neat one because it actually holds things inside of it. This was one of the first crafting tables to do that, to just hold things inside when you went somewhere else to do something else. And it was very exciting at the time. Nowadays, it's kind of expected, and it doesn't have the greatest inventory tweaks connection compatibility. So it's fallen out of favor a bit. In any case, we will get four common treasures out of this, which is something I have no idea what these are. And that opens up quite a bit of new cool stuff that we're going to be able to make. We'll get started on that in a moment. These common treasures come from Thongcraft. Click to open or keep to trade. Well, this is a fun mechanic that is new to me in whatever version of Thongcraft added it. Uh, I actually have not done a lot of deep work on Thongcraft since I think 4.1. And we're well past 4.2, and in fact, I think Azanor is currently planning the next big version of Thalmcraft with huge changes to the way aura nodes and all of that work. So, yeah, exciting stuff. Anyway, we got Ender Pearl and some gold coins. More gold coins. Potion of Fire Resistance and a Potion of Decay. Alright, so you get some cool stuff out of here. Splash Potion of Swiftness. Not, like, the most important things ever in the world, but still, they're neat. It's fun. You can probably afford not to use them, though. 
and to keep them to trade. Uh, mm, where do I want that? You know what? This is going to be a temporary area. Then let's go ahead and noob it up vanilla style and put the chest in the floor. There we go. And this way, anytime I need to, I can just grab what I want out of here. Because this is where I'm keeping my Thomcraft stuff for the time being. Alright, before we go any further, I need to get myself a bunch of paper. Uh, and I am almost entirely out of sugarcane. How is my paper supply doing? I'm almost entirely out of paper, too. So, before we go any further, I'm going to go take some time and farm up more paper with the sugarcane seeds that I have. And I'm going to make myself another one of those scribing tools, get some basic materials ready, and I'll be back once I'm ready to continue. See you soon. Alrighty, folks, the sugarcane is growing strong. I have plenty of paper and an additional scribing tool, all of which will be important as we progress. The very first step in Thaumcraft is research. Before you can build most thaumaturgical items and blocks, you first need to discover how to do so. This is a several step process that involves examining blocks, items, and creatures with a thaumometer, using those research points to expand your aspect knowledge, which isn't super important, but will be for a couple of important steps, and using the aspects you know and discovering practical knowledge and recipes with the research table. We're going to start working through all of those steps. Step one, the very first thing, and I'm going to be linking the guide that I'm using for this on forum.feedthebeast.com. It is a Thaumcraft guide to a quick way to discover all aspects that has been updated for version 4.2. You're going to need to combine two aspects in your research table to make a third. And to do that, you just click the aspects like so, and then you can attempt to combine them. Not all combinations will bear fruit, but the one that we are using, Aqua and Terra, will. Putting these two together will create the Victus, or life, aspect. And because we have just discovered it for the first time, you saw pop up in the lower right-hand corner, we got the one for combining those two aspects together, and two extra just for creating it in the first place. The rest of the aspects we are going to mostly be able to cre uh, discover by scanning things, and we're going to run through the entire list right now. First thing you want to scan is a torch to unlock the Lux aspect, and you'll notice down there I have discovered a clue to new research. If I open up my Thalmonomicon and go down to Alchemy, I believe... Huh, maybe it's not Alchemy. Hang on. Do, 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 do. They haven't... They're supposed to have a different color to them. So when you scan certain things and you unlock clues to new research, you will see that occasionally examining something will reveal additional clues and insights, unlocking subjects you can research further. Research discovered in this fashion will have amber icons. Okay, so they're icons. Uh, maybe I can't actually see whatever I've discovered because it's hidden behind something else. That sounds at least partially possible. Or maybe it's in one of the many add-ons that we have. Auto Magi, Treyromancy, Apocrypha, also known as Forbidden Magic, which has some really cool cross-mod stuff built into it. Appymancy, which is all about magic bees. Witching Gadgets, which, as you know, also allows the obelisks to spawn or be retrogen. And Thaumic Esoterica, which I'm, I have no idea what this is all about, but it looks like it's going to allow us to get access to some rings at a certain point. Now, you'll also find when you scan something that you get this big glowy star here. This lets us know that there are new aspects in here, and when we take a look at the aspects, we can see that, for example, Lux is created by Air and Ignis, and Victus is created by Aqua and Terra. And we will be able to put those together in our research table if we want to. Later on, we'll be able to upgrade the research table through research expertise to show that stuff right here in the table without needing to reference the Thaumonomicon, going to aspects of magic, and flipping through. Next on the list, we need coal. Either a block or a bit of it or some ore to get the Potentia research. We also gained more points for Ignis. 
Now, you will see that when I mouse over the coal, if I hold shift, it tells me all of the aspects that are on that bit of coal. This is really great because it means you can scan through your inventory and see what you have already researched and what you haven't. And also as a quick reference for, hey, this thing has some goodies on it that I need for my next step. Okay, next on the list is grass for that herba research. A few more points of that. Huh, the coal set I unlocks a new bit of research too, but let's see, do I have any amber icons? Not yet, it seems. That's okay. Really great thing about this new Thaumonomicon is the search bar. I'm super happy about this. If I know what I'm looking for, I don't have to worry about... Huh. Spinning. Interesting. Why is it not coming up with... Oh, because I haven't actually discovered it yet. But if I search for, say, aspects of magic, this I have discovered and it'll take me straight to the article. So anything that you have already discovered, you can search in the search bar without needing to leave the area. It's pretty good. Or leave that part of the Thaumonomicon. Next on the list, we have the trapdoor, which will get us the motus and arbor aspects, or motion and trees. After that, we have chests. To scan something that you can interact with, just hold shift and hold right click. There we go. Chess gives us the arbor and vacuous aspects. And vacuous is the one that we were really after from that. Next on the list, we have glass. Scanning a glass block will get us the vitreous aspect, which is the crystal or clear aspect of magic. Uh, hmm. The next part on the list in the guide is a potion of weakness, which I do not have and ha but planned on making. However, I might instead be able to use one of these potions. Let's try the potion of fire resistance. Nope. To understand this, you need to study tools. Potion of decay. Yes, that gave us a point of aqua and two points of precantatio, which is the magic aspect. You're going to be making a lot of use of precantatio. Ah, there we go. And that got us more precantatio. However, it did not give us the aspect that we were also looking for. You can find precantatio just about everywhere. The aspect we're really looking for out of the Potion of Weakness is Mortus. So we're going to create ourselves a brewing stand here. Uh, where's my assembly halo? Thank you. So blaze rod there, three cobblestone there creates the brewing stand. We're just going to set that up over here. Um, right like that. There we go. That'll do. That'll do nicely. And we're going to need to get some water into this brewing stand. We don't actually need all three, but I'm going to use all three because why not? The first thing that you add whenever you are brewing is a bit of nether wart to turn these bottles of water into awkward potions. And then if I take a look at the potion of weakness specifically, we can see that I need to use awkward uh, a mundane potion and a fermented spider eye. Excellent. So let's get ourselves the fermented spider eye. Do I have any of them stocked up already? It's just barely possible. No, no, unfortunately I don't. So we'll grab a spider eye. To make the fermented spider eye, this is actually a vanilla item. You use just a mushroom and some sugar. Very, very simple. Do I already have sugar somewhere? I bet I already have sugar somewhere, but I'm not going to take the time to find it right now. This is why I need to get an applied energistic system set up so that I can stop having a million disparate locations where things are. All right, now that we've got... Oh, wait a second. I think that the potion of weakness required mundane potions, not awkward potions. Mundane. Water bottle. Oh, awkward potion. Excellent. So then we toss the fermented spider eye in there and we let that brew and then we will get our next potion. Uh, while we wait, uh, I think I can go scan the chicken that I have. My one lone remaining chicken. That is a fence. Chicken is kind of stuck in the fence. Um, huh. Well, I can target it, which means I should be able to grab a lead. I have another one, don't I? Yes, right there. And drag it away from the fence. Come here, chicken. Come on. Come on. There we go. 
Now I can take the lead off of it, and now I should be able to scan it. There we are, and that gives us the Voletus and Bestia aspects. Voletus being flight, Bestia being living things. Here's our Potion of Weakness, which gets us the Mortus aspect, or the aspect of death. Ooh, scary out there, huh? Next on the list is Soul Sand. The list, by the way, also contains a, if you have not visited the Nether yet, alternative to the Brewing and the Soul Sand. After Soul Sand comes Paper, or Cognitio. Or, yeah, Cognitio, which is your brains aspect, basically. Intelligence, smarts. After Cognitio comes Rotten Flesh, which I have some over here. And in fact, I can just grab out the next few few, I think. We're going to need the rotten flesh. We're going to need the wheat. We're going to need the flint. And we're going to need the obsidian in order. And let's just get those onto the ground and start and scan through each of them in order. Rotten flesh unlocks corpus and humanus. Humanity and or uh, basically meat and people. Wheat gets you Fam is for hunger and messes for crops. Flint is full of instrumentum for tools. And obsidian is full of tenebrae for darkness. These are the building block aspects. Now you can scan anything and you'll be able to unlock. You'll be able to get the research on pretty much everything else in the world. So in no particular order, the final things to scan to unlock everything. You're going to want a bit of wool. You're going to want a bit of Snow, you're going to want a spider eye. Let's just go ahead and grab things a bunch at a time. Uh, the milk bucket. Basically anything in here that is not already scanned, we're going to go ahead and scan. So, our potion of fire resistance probably won't give us anything new. Oh, it gave us two to men. That is why we needed to scan tools. It taught us about armor, which is a offshoot, an expansion of tools. Here we go. Our bucket of milk is going to be full of metallum and sano. Metallum being metal, sano being the heart in the bottle, which is healing. The sunflower gives us the... Hmm, that's just air and herba. Maybe I need to set it up first. Nope, that doesn't work at all. That is not giving me the aspect that it told me it would, which was census. But don't worry, we can get that elsewhere. Greatwood Sapling has a bit of crepe precantatio. Wool has Panis and Fabrico. Those are the cloth and creation or building things. Snow has Jellum, which is cold. Spider Eye contains... Ooh, there's Census. That's the owl-looking one. That's for your senses. And I believe that that is Venenum, which is... Or Venium. Venenum. This is all, like, faux Latin or actual Latin, and I'm terrible at pronouncing it. Uh, that's the poison aspect. And then your silverwood sapling, again, contains a bit of Precantatio. Looking over there for new trees that have grown, and I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm hoping that they start coming up soon. And again, once you have things scanned, you can just easily check over them in your inventory and find out what you have scanned and what is still awaiting scanning. Arrows are an important one that'll unlock something new, but not everything in here will. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have no need of the iron or the logs that I've picked up, but I'm still going to scan them. Because every item is a new thing that you can scan to get more aspects to work with so that you have more research points. Pretty much the very first thing you do is go scan crazy. So this contained the weapon aspect of... Oh, uh, where is it? Um, Kellum. Greatwood Logs, again, more magic and arbor. Silverwood Logs, more magic, arbor, and ordo, which is one of the primal aspects. Enderpearls contain Modus and Alienus, which is really, really cool. That is the things are strange and alien aspect and is used in a lot of teleportation tech and other great things. Slime Balls have the aspect for slime, Slimus, or Limus, not Slimus. Gold ing uh, iron ingots just contain metallum. Gold ingots contain metallum and lucrum, which is the aspect of greed and 
very useful for some of the higher value items that you can make. All right, let's make sure we have everything in the chest and then we're gonna go out at night. There's a couple of things that we need to scan, a couple of monsters that are out there. Do -do -do. Ooh, gold coins. Shards, of course, are gonna be good to scan. And these are shards from Forbidden Magic. We'll get to those in a minute, actually. You're also going to want to make sure you scan things like your arcane work table, your research table, even your uh, sparks you can't do, mana pools, also no, but the brewing stand, definitely. Not all mod items have things included. Some do. Any mod item that is made out of basic materials through a standard crafting table, you should be able to scan and gain... Oh wow, that was all of the metallum. I think I might have actually capped myself out on metallum. Let's find out. Um, Where did metallum go? We're up to 89. There is a limit to how much you can get, and once you're over a certain limit, you will stop gaining as many as you could have. Unless that is a config option or an old bit of difficulty that no longer exists. Sadly, I have not kept up on Thomcraft as much as I should have, so some of your information that I am talking about here might be a little outdated. If it is, please feel free to correct me in the comments below, and I'll be certain to talk about it in the next episode. Zombie Brains gave us Cognitio, Corpus, and the undeath aspect called Ex Animus. The Crucible is more Metallum. Fabrico and Precantatio. Order, order Shard is just lots of Ordo. The Gold Coin is just a bit of Lucrum. Great Wood Slabs, just a bit of Arbor. And that's true for all of this various wooden slabs. Wrath, Envy, and Sloth Shards. These come from Forbidden Magic. And they all contain special Forbidden Magic aspects, which we're going to unlock now by scanning them. These are not the only Forbidden Magic Shards, and in fact, if you go down to Apoc a Apocrypha, you can scan around somewhere and find the Nether Shards. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 types of Nether Shards, and if you scroll through, it will tell you how to get, or at least give you hints on how to get most of them. So, yeah. You're going to need to unlock how to get all of them, later on if you really want to go deep into Forbidden Magic, which is a cool mod. Now, you can scan even items that you've been creating. For example, I would want to scan my Thaumonomicon and my Iron Capped Wooden Wand so that I can get those aspects available for research. All right, I think you got the idea now. Scan everything, use the points to work on the next step. I'll do most of the rest of my scanning off camera. You won't have to watch me do all of the scanning. Nope, not possible. Wow, yeah, good stuff. So yeah, let's move on. That covers how to generate all of the aspects in the game. I'm double checking here. Ooh, wait, there's one last one. Fence gate. Has the iter or machinery or and the machina aspects which we had not had yet. Um, I think I got some Machina by scanning redstone as well. Um, cows are good because they're just, you know, beasts. Same with pigs, but you already have those. Uh, double checking, I believe we have covered... Mo Ooh, actually pigs have the gluttony aspect on them. That's fun. I believe we have most of the aspects. There's only a couple remaining that we have not unlocked this way, and I don't even know if these items will work for them, but we're certainly going to try. If I toss the Terra Blade into the world and scan that, that has a bunch of Telem on it. If I toss the Flint Shovel in the world and scan that, unfortunately you cannot scan your Tinker's Construct items. However, your Terra Shatterer you can scan, and that has Perfodio on it, that's the mining aspect. Also, I believe that's Mutandus? That's the, that, that circle there is the aspect of change, and I don't remember what it is. But I do remember you can also find it on uh, eggs. You used to be able to find it on eggs. You no longer can. Okay. That's fine. That gives us more feathery aspect. That's cool. Uh, we're going to need a hoe to unlock the meto aspect. I, and the flint mattock isn't going to work. So, let's see. Can we make the golden hoe? We can craft the golden hoe. 
or the steel hoe. Those are the only hoes that we can really craft short of thaumium. Okay, well, we'll make a golden hoe because I don't want to wait to unlock the last of the aspects and I want all of that to be on one episode if I possibly can. For the next episode, we are going to get into research and the mechanics of that. I will show it a couple of times on camera and any particularly difficult researches I will attempt to record. Well, that was unexpected. But most likely, I'm going to do most of my research off camera because there's just not a lot of reason to do it on camera. All right, and then now that we have the research off of that, we can go ahead and throw it in the smeltery. It'll melt this down into two ingots and turn it back into some gold for us. We could save it because I think we need it. Yeah, like the Harvest Goddess sigil and such can be used to... The Golden Hoe can be crafted into that. Not a problem. We will be able to create those later. All right, let me double check the list and make sure we actually have everything now. Ah, that was the change aspect I was looking at. If you scan a hopper, you will get the permutatio aspect. That's the little circle there. And, of course, a ton more metallum. Wow. That's crazy. We, we have got to be getting close to the cap for metallum now. But the only way that I can tell is by actually looking at my Thalmanomicon, which I've stuffed back in the chest. I guess because I'm a derp. Do, do, do. Checking through the aspects. Wow, look at all of those things we've unlocked. 117 metallum now. No, I think we actually got everything out of them. Nice. Maybe the research cap is an old, no longer used thing. I'm not 100% certain anymore. It's slightly annoying that I can't remember that for certain. Anyway, there are two more aspects that we have not yet researched. However, they're not something that are important for us to create in the table, so we're going to skip doing so and wait until later on when we can get our hands on those researches. So, that's going to be all for today's episode. Next time, we're going to start actually building some cool stuff out of Thomcraft, and this is all part of the plan for the boiler. Trust me, I want to get a go golem going. I want to have that golem work on my coal for me so that I can use coal to feed my boiler. Or maybe get a golem working on tree farming for me so I can easily use lots of charcoal to feed my boiler. Either way, this means that I need to get golem crafting going, and to do that I need to get through Thalmcraft. So bear with me, we're going to go through Thalmcraft and teach every bit of it until we can create some golems. So thank you very much for joining me folks, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, leave me a thumbs up and tell me what you liked about it. If you have not, leave me a thumbs down, tell me what I can do better. This is, will ensure that I stay in your subscriber feed so that my videos keep showing up, and I'll see you next time.